I'm here at Paris Mountain, an ancient copper mine just south of the town of Amluch on the Isle of Anglesey. It's pretty quiet here today, but a couple of hundred years ago, there could have been over a thousand people working behind me, making this the copper capital of the world. The mountain was first mined for its abundant copper ore as far back as 4,000 years ago in the early Bronze Age. Not just surface level mining either, but an array of underground workings, most of which were dug out by hand. The mine was then left untouched for the next few thousand years, but in 1764 the locally powerful Bailey family granted a lease to Charles Rowe to work the mountain for its copper, or more accurately to make others do the work for him. A local miner, Roland Pugh, was the man who in 1768 discovered the Great Lode, essentially a large deposit of copper ore. He was rewarded for his efforts with a free cottage and a bottle of whiskey. His discovery would go on to have far-reaching impacts, as it was this that prompted large-scale mining of the mountain to begin. Thomas Williams, a local businessman, set a group of women known as the Copper Ladies to work on breaking up the plentiful but low-quality surface ore, mostly using large hammers to smash the rocks and extract the precious copper. The copper mined here was used by the Navy to sheathe their ships, helping to make Nelson's fleet one of the fastest in the world. The Paris Mine Company even began forging their own coins during a national small currency shortage in the late 1780s. Mining here was so successful that it severely damaged Cornwall's mining industry halfway across the country. Meanwhile, all of this was good news for the nearby town of Amluch, whose previously unnoteworthy fishing port became one of the busiest export hubs in the world, exporting at its peak almost half of the world's copper, mostly to Lancashire and Swansea. The town also became a site for processing other products such as beer and tobacco, as well as the byproducts of copper extraction like sulphur. An alternative method of copper extraction involving purpose-built drainage ponds paved the way for entirely new chemical industries on the Isle of Anglesey, which further bolstered Amlock's prominence. Of course, the exponential rise of Paris Mountain and the town of Amlock couldn't last forever, and following the death of Thomas Williams in 1802, there was a steady decline in production, as the easily accessible surface ore began to run out. The only option was to look deeper, and of course, the deeper the ore, the more expensive the extraction. Production fell to less than a tenth of its peak by the end of the century, partly due to the increase in cost of extraction, and partly just due to cheaper competition. In hindsight, this might all be for the best though, because instead of a giant polluting extraction factory, the mine was left to bask in its own natural beauty. The stunning colours of the rock, combined with the visible pools, caverns, and the smattering of purple heather and gorse, give this place a surreal, almost out of this world feel to it. And if mining here hadn't become unprofitable and unviable, all of this might have been lost, along with the ancient caverns that have an inherent sentimental value. There are some wind turbines on the west side, perhaps a symbol of how we've begun to leave our destructive, polluting ways in the past, at least here on Anglesey. Ultimately, Paris Mountain serves as a reminder that even if everyone deserts you and you're left all alone, that might just make you all the more beautiful. <laughs>